welcome back to the Maker Jane channel where I share all things English paper piecing from tips and tutorials to projects and more. So if you love EPP like I do, please consider subscribing. In this video, we're continuing on with the EPP skill building series, Flowers and Butterflies. Over the last several months, we have covered everything relating to EPP. We started with the very basics of working with hexagons. Then we moved into different shapes with sharp points and how to bring all of those points together and how to work with elongated shapes as well. Then we moved into fussy cutting and I taught you how to choose fabric for fussy cutting as well as how to make your own fussy cutting templates and then showed you how to fussy cut. And in our final section of our series, we covered curves. At the end of each of those sections, I shared with you a small project that you can make using the flowers and butterflies from each section. In today's video, as we're finishing up the entire series, and specifically the section on curves, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this beautiful hanging mobile project using your EPP shapes your flowers and butterflies that you've made during this series. So you don't have to just use your curves, flowers and butterflies. You can use any flowers and butterflies that you made during the whole series. Feel free to mix and match whichever flowers and butterflies you want, or you can of course just stick with one particular pattern. Let's say you're really drawn to the curves pattern, then use flowers and butterflies that are just from the curves pattern. So it's totally up to you and this project is totally customizable. And I wanna dive right into it, but just in case you're brand new to this EPP skill building series, be sure to check out the links down below in the description. I've got all the information there for you if you'd like to get started from the very beginning of the series. Also, if you've been following along with the series or you're just getting started with the series and you would like to share your work with fellow EP peers, then be sure to join and share your work in the private Facebook group that I've also linked down below. Okay, that's enough talking. Let's head over to the work table and we'll go over all the materials that you're going to need to make this beautiful hanging mobile. The first thing you'll need is some sort of stabilizing material. For this project, I found the Pellon Fusion Shape to work perfectly. It's a nice, thick, stiff material and it has glue on both sides, so it's completely fusible. You'll also need some craft scissors to cut your stabilizer and you'll need a pencil to trace your shapes onto the stabilizer. The next thing you'll need is a needle and thread and for this project I'm going to be just using a standard sharps needle and I just chose a few different coordinating threads that go with most of the motifs that I'll be using and showing you in this project. In addition to the sharps needle, you will also want to choose another needle that has a much larger eye on it. And for this, I just chose a cruel needle, or you could also use an embroidery needle. It has a nice elongated eye. And we want that because we're gonna be using it to thread this monofilament illusion cord. It's basically beading cord. And it's very much like fishing line. So we'll be using this needle for the monofilament and you're definitely going to want to grab a thimble because we're going to be going through several layers and you want to protect your finger. Lastly, we're going to take a look at the hardware that we'll be using for this project. And here I've got a couple examples of some steel rings that I found at my local hobby shop. One of them is just a standard ring. The other one has a ring inside of a ring. So feel free to experiment. For this project, I'll just be using the single ring. You'll also need some hanging hardware so that you can hang your mobile from the ceiling. So that's it for the materials for this project. Let's head over to the ironing table and I'll show you the next step. For this project, you wanna grab all the motifs that you wanna use for your hanging mobile. And we're gonna be leaving the papers in for all of our motifs. So don't remove any of the papers. And you should have two of each shape. And so the first step is to press the little tails out of the way. So that's what I'm doing here. I am just took my first motif over to the ironing table 
and I flipped it over so that I'm looking at the wrong side and I'm pressing that little tail back a couple of times so that it is hiding behind the motif. And you want to do this same process for each of the motifs that you'll be using for the mobile. And again, you need two of each motif. So I will be using two of this particular butterfly motif and we're going to sandwich them together and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. But take every single one of your motifs and press those little tails out of the way so that they are not visible from the front. Once you have done this for all of your motifs, you can take your motifs over to your stabilizer and you're going to trace around your motif onto the stabilizer. Now for each pair of butterfly that are matching, you only need one tracing of your stabilizer because we're sandwiching them in between the two butterflies. So once you have traced your stabilizer, the next step is to cut it out. And you want to cut it out inside of that tracing line, about an eighth to a quarter of an inch, just like you see me doing here. Once you have cut out your stabilizer, it's a good idea to double check and make sure that it actually fits within your motif. So here I'm just setting it down to make sure that it doesn't extend past the edge of the butterfly. Once you're happy with how your stabilizer looks, you can bring everything over to the ironing table. And the first step is to place the first motif, or the first butterfly in this case, wrong side facing up. Then you will place the stabilizer on top of that. And then you'll grab your second butterfly motif and place it right side facing up so that you sandwich your stabilizer in between the two motifs. Then you can press, and I recommend pressing with a dry iron, but just double check the packaging for whatever stabilizer you're using. And because of the thickness of this piece, it's a good idea to flip the whole thing over and press it from both sides. So repeat the same process for every motif that you want to use for your hanging mobile. And this is what it should look like once you have fused it. So you can see I've got both of my butterflies fused to that stabilizer that is sandwiched in between them. And you'll notice that there is a little bit of a gap in between the two pieces, and that's totally normal. We're going to close that gap up in the next step. And here is how we're going to do that. So you'll want to thread your sharps needle with a coordinating thread. And we're going to use a stitch called the ladder stitch to close up that gap. So if you're not familiar with the ladder stitch, I'll walk you through it here as we get going. I didn't knot the end of my thread. I just left it loose and I am using a single thickness of thread. Um, and you can knot it at the beginning. Once you've got that knotted, then you will start your ladder stitch. And basically, the ladder stitch alternates from one side to the next. So you'll take a stitch on the first side, and then you're going to hop over to the second piece in the same spot where your thread came out, and you're going to go in to the fabric in that spot in the second piece and you'll take a stitch in that piece. Then you'll hop over to the opposite side again, and you'll take another stitch. So you'll just continue in the same exact manner with the ladder stitch all the way around your motif until you get back to where you started, and then you can tie off with a few back stitches, just like you started. And you'll do the same exact thing for each of the motifs that you want hanging in your hanging mobile. When you come to a corner, you're going to take a stitch right up to that inner point, just like you see me doing here. And then when you jump across to the other side, you will start that stitch right at that inner point and take your stitch. And if you've stitched the ladder stitch correctly, it will close up that gap beautifully. 
Once you've got all your motifs stitched around with the ladder stitch, the next step is to attach the monofilament to those motifs. You're going to need the cruel needle, your craft scissors, your motifs, and your monofilament. So I found the best way to thread the cruel needle with the monofilament is to first make a little loop with the end of the thread. And then you're going to put that loop into the eye of the needle. But before you pull it all the way through, we're going to actually loop that thread or the monofilament around the needle, just like so. And that's going to basically attach that to the needle so that it doesn't come unthreaded as we're working on the project. So then you're going to need to grab your thimble because we're going to be sending this monofilament through these layers of fabric and paper. Remember, we didn't take the papers out of our motifs. We left our papers in. And so we're going through those papers and through all of that fabric. Once you've got that threaded through your motifs, then you can go ahead and remove the needle. The next thing you want to do is you want to tie a knot in the end of your monofilament. And rather than just tie one knot, you might want to tie two or three. That's going to help that really stay secure. And you want to make sure that you pull it nice and tight so that the knot doesn't come loose. And you can leave a little bit of a tail also to help you tie that knot. I used about an inch length of tail and then I just trimmed it back slightly to about a quarter of an inch. You don't want to trim it all the way up to that knot just in case it starts to unravel. So to prevent it from unraveling, just leave a little bit of a tail there. And because it's monofilament, you're not going to see it once the project is hanging. Once you have that end of the monofilament secured, then you'll want to measure out about 18 inches from your motif and cut the other end at that point. That should give you plenty of thread to hang your motif and it'll give you some wiggle room uh, so you can really figure out at what height you want your motif. So you'll do the same exact thing with each of the motifs that you'll be hanging for your hanging mobile. So again, you're going to thread your needle, loop that loop around your needle so that it holds that needle in place, and then you will send the needle through your motif Remove the needle from the monofilament, tie a knot in the end, and then measure out about 18 inches so that you've got plenty of thread to hang your motifs. The next step is to measure out the monofilament for the steel ring. So if you have one, grab a soft tape measure, your monofilament and your steel ring, and your scissors. And for this, I measured the diameter of the steel ring and then I doubled it for the length of the thread. You can do the same or you can customize it. Basically, this is going to be the section of thread that's going to hang from the ceiling or from the hardware to the steel ring. So feel free to make it as long as you want. You're going to need four of this same measurement because we're going to space out each length of thread around that steel ring in four different locations. That's going to help that ring to stay balanced and level once it's hanging. So for my steel ring, uh, it's about a 12 inch diameter. And so I cut a 24 inch piece of thread. And I did that four times. So I would have four sections of thread that were each 24 inches long. Once you've got your four pieces cut, the next step is to take each one of those pieces and fold it in half. So you'll fold it in half and make a loop on one end. And you're going to take that loop and you're going to loop it around the steel ring. And then you're going to put your fingers through the loop grab the rest of the thread and pull it through that loop. And that's how you secure it to the steel ring. So you do that same exact thing for the remaining three pieces of thread that you cut for your ring. 
And as you attach them, try to space them evenly around the whole circumference of the ring. Once you've got all four of them attached to the ring, the next step is to tie them together in the center. So the way that I did this is I took two, one from opposite ends of the ring, and I took both of the ends and I tied them together in the middle. Then I took the other two threads at the other sides of the ring and I tied those two together. Once I had those meeting in the middle with two knots kind of lining up together in the middle, then I took the ends of all of those threads and tied them together just like so, right in the center. That was really the easiest way that I could figure out how to kind of get all of those threads together in the center without fighting with them because they're really hard to handle and manage because they're really hard to see. And it's kind of a stiff thread. So just do the best you can. Try to get them uh, all into the center as best as you can, just like so. And then you'll be ready to hang your steel ring. So the location where I'm hanging mine already has a hook in the ceiling. So all I'm using here is an S hook. Once you've got your hanging hardware installed, the next thing you can do is go ahead and hang your ring on your hardware. With your ring hanging, you can now attach each motif onto the ring. Start with one and work your way around the ring eyeballing the height and the location and the placement of how you want your motifs to hang. For this step, you'll take the loose end of the thread that's attached to your motif and simply tie it to the ring using two or three square knots. Once you've got it tied to the ring, you can trim off the excess. Make sure you leave about an inch of a tail so that the knot doesn't come undone. And that's how easy it is to make your own EPP hanging mobile. For this video, I used motifs from each of the skill building patterns, but remember, you can choose just one motif and make an entire mobile with that one shape. I hope you enjoyed making this project with me and seeing how easy it is to put together something like this. It's such a fun way to use your English paper piecing motifs. And you don't have to be just limited to flowers and butterflies. You can really make a mobile using any EPP motif shapes that you come up with on your own or maybe any other pattern that you find out there as well. So I hope you have fun with this project. If you do end up making the mobile, remember to come over into the private Facebook group and share your work with the rest of us who are passionate about EPP. If you have any questions about this project or even the series in general, or you'd like to comment on the video and tell me how you liked it and how you liked the project, then be sure to leave those down below in the comment section below the video. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, keep on stitching.